Hi everyone and welcome back to another candle review here on the channel. My name is Wade Thomas. I'm the owner of Black Tie Barn Candle Company. If you are interested in learning any more about candle making, running a candle business, or seeing any other candle reviews, be sure to subscribe to the channel below. And if you wouldn't mind, give this video a thumbs up by hitting the like button below as well. That really helps out this channel, but it also helps to ensure that you don't miss out on any future content. So I really appreciate the support and I appreciate you all for being here. Let's go ahead and talk about today's video. So as I mentioned, we are doing another candle review video. However, this one's a little bit different than the others. Uh, today's candles were actually sent in by a larger well-known brand, uh, a company that sells candles, but also other products as well. Now the name is in French and I'm not the best at pronouncing French names, so I will do my best, but it is La Jolie Muse. So just in case I did not pronounce that correctly, I will leave that of course uh, in the title, but also the description as well, if you wanna check them out. Speaking of checking them out, um, as I mentioned, they are a larger brand, so they have a very well-established website, but they also have a large presence on Amazon as well. Uh, they have been around a while, since uh, probably 2014 or 15, I think it is, um, and they've grown quite quickly, so they are a definitely a larger brand. They have seen the other candle review videos that we do here on this channel, and so they reached out to me and thought that they may send me a few of the products to test and review on the channel as well. So just like I would do with any other candle products, I will unbox them here on the video, I will give them my first impressions about the fragrance and the labels and the look of the jars and basically the whole shebang early on. And then I will also test them like I would any other candle and then come back in the second part of this video and give you my feedback on how they burned, uh, the wicking, the overall performance and so on. And they were also generous enough for anyone that does want to try them out that they provided a discount code for any of the viewers here on this channel. I will put that in the description below. And then a thank you again to them for sending in these candles to review on the channel. So anyone that is new to these reviews, if this is the first review you've seen, most of the time we're testing candles from uh, new candle makers or other small businesses like ourselves. Um, and it's a great opportunity to not only have your you know candle tested and reviewed by another candle maker, but also to engage in the community. We're always trying to help each other out, give tips and tricks. Uh, and so it's it's just a great opportunity. If any of you are interested in doing the same thing, just let me know in the comments section and uh, and then I'll let you know how to reach out to me and we will go from there. So it's a very simple process. Or if you are interested in just watching other candle review videos, I have an entire playlist dedicated to these candle reviews. So check that out on the channel as well. Uh, thank you all for being here as usual. Let's go ahead and dive in, talk about the overall look, appearance, the aesthetics, the cold throw, the labels, and all of that first. And then I will step away for a couple of weeks, do some testing and come right back here on the video within a matter of seconds and let you know how they performed. So let me say before, while, while I'm opening this up, what their target market is and what their approach is. Uh, their goal is to provide practical and economical luxury candles for your home. So they're looking to find a place in people's homes that fit that contemporary luxury style. And they have several different jar options to fit all these different personalities and different and appeal to different buyers and consumers. But they want to do it in a practical and still economical way. Their price point is higher than your average kind of candle you'd find on a shelf, but it's not near as expensive as some of those typical luxury candles. Uh, they're trying to provide luxury, but at an affordable price. So that is their goal. And you will see some variation in their products, but they all have that same feel of a luxury home candle. So with that being said, let's go ahead and dive in. So this first box uh, is a custom box and, and most of their products will come in custom boxes. But as you can see, they've got the title in here. They even have a label. Uh, this one is Pumpkin Chai. I don't have a pumpkin chai fragrance personally in my own candle collection, so I'm interested to see how this one uh, smells. And they do mention that this is a natural soy wax. Um, the, the container itself is a very nice, kind of glossy, decorative box. Go ahead and open this first one up. They have a little promo card here inside the box, and if we open this up, you'll see a lid uh, it's packaged separately, which is quite common with a lot of these luxury uh, products. So you can see here this is uh, pumpkin chai. So here we go. This is the uh, gorgeous orange luxury vessel here. And they even have a label here on the jar. I would not have expected a jar like this to have uh, a label on it, uh, but it does. It actually had a spot for the label, which is a nice touch. And then on the bottom, they have a custom, also matching warning label that uh, is not only a warning, but also has the uh, name of the fragrance on it as well. All right, so I can definitely smell the cold throw. Now, most so soy and natural waxes do have great cold throw, so I'm not surprised by that at all. Kind of have that creamy look that most soy waxes have. Now, just feeling the top of this candle a little bit, you, it's definitely recognizable. You know that it's a soy candle. It has that sort of dry, almost kind of chalky texture to it that a lot of soy candles have. 
Um, but it looks like it's very smooth and level and it looks like it's adhering pretty well to the side of the jars, although that's not as relevant in a, uh, in a jar like this where you can't really see that. Uh, but it definitely has that soy look. Like you know looking at it that this is a soy candle. I see a touch of frosting on it. Also again, pretty common with soy candles. But I don't know that this is a soy wax that uh, we all would use from some of our candle suppliers. Um, they, this could be their own custom blend or proprietary blend from their own manufacturer. I'm not quite sure. They didn't send all their candle information like we would in other reviews. So I'm not gonna be uh, fact checking myself at the end of the video, which I know is a lot of fun sometimes, but I will still make some guesses. Um, the best that I can. Uh, I just don't necessarily have a way to validate those guesses. But if I had to relate this to a wax, to a popular wax that some of you might know, I would probably say it's it's sort of close to like a golden wax for uh, 444. I don't, I don't think it's like a 464. It's not quite soft enough for that in my opinion, but I could be wrong. Let's talk about the wick here for a second. Uh, the wick is not something I am as familiar with. The wick is a little bit different. This is not, again, a, a typical wick that a lot of you will find at your suppliers. It's not an LX wick. It's not a, a standard HDP wick or a CD wick or an eco wick. It's none of those. And you can tell just by the look of it. Um, it has kind of an orangish tint to it a little bit. Um, that could just be reflecting off the glass. It's hard to tell. It's, it's definitely a cotton wick, but there are a lot of types of cotton wicks. It could be just a straight cotton wick um, or, a, or a square braid wick or something like that. It is a little difficult to tell what wick this might be. I am interested and definitely interested in, in burning this one. I don't have a pumpkin chai and I do love that fragrance. I would say it's, it's certainly more chai than it is pumpkin but there's a little bit of pumpkin there too. This smells a lot like a pumpkin chai latte. I mean, it's it's a wonderful smell um, and I'm anxious to try this one out. Let's go ahead and move over to this next box here. Now this next box is a fresh apple. And again, it's own custom box. I actually really like this box. I think this is a gorgeous box. Okay, so I can smell this candle coming through the box. So that's a good sign on cold throw for sure. Let's go ahead and open this up. So this is a unique jar. Quite different than the other one, but still has that nice luxury feel. I'm gonna set this gold lid to the side. This has a slight taper to it, which sometimes can make it interesting to burn. Although the taper is, it tapers out towards the bottom, which is usually better than one that tapers in towards the bottom, just for wicking purposes, uh, because the jar will generally get a little hotter towards the bottom. So uh, lovely design. I, I think this is a gorgeous jar. It's kind of this uh, orangish reddish color if the camera's not picking it up too well but it's a uh, gorgeous jar. And once again, on the bottom, they have their uh, custom label that not only has the fragrance information and a little bit about the candle itself, but of course their warning information as well. I love this fragrance. This reminds me a little bit of your kind of standard pure apple fragrances that most candle companies have. I have a Macintosh apple fragrance that smells very similar to. Now, one thing I've noticed about this, and the more I, the more I kind of bring this in, uh, it smells very true. Like there are a lot of apple fragrances that are very, very good. And then there's others that smell a little artificial or almost like a candy. This smells like real apples. I mean, this is very, very well done. It's very, very pure, true apple fragrance. So uh, I, I'll be interested in how this performs. I've tested a lot of apple fragrances in the past. So I'm a fan of just straight apple fragrances. I love them, even though they're simple, I love them. So I know I'm gonna be a fan of this, but I'll, I'm definitely curious uh, how well the notes come together when it burns. Because as I mentioned, sometimes they smell kind of artificial, but then they're better with hot throw. And other times it's the opposite. So I'm definitely curious on this one. Uh, as it burns. And again, I just love apple. Nice and smooth. It definitely has that kind of dry, chalky, almost texture to it. But once again, the adhesion looks good. Uh, very consistent looking. Um, I don't see any sinkholes or, or uh, major characteristics. Now, they could be smoothing out the top like a lot of us do with soy wax candles. Or they're just, again, using a custom blend that they have figured out uh, in combination with their dialed in processes to prevent any issues from happening. But with all that being said, it's still recognizable that it's a soy wax. It has that soy characteristic. And this goes to show for any of you using soy waxes, even the bigger, larger brands still have that noticeable soy texture and soy look to their waxes. Um, let's talk about the wick a little bit. I'm gonna assume that the two wicks are the same. They're, they're similar looking, although this one, as I was hoping, gives me a little bit better look at the wick. And looking at this one, I actually have a guess on the type of wick now, a specific guess. Um, it's none of the ones I talked about earlier, 
I don't know how many of you are familiar with uh, Performa Wix is what they're called. Um, they are uh, kind of a, a unique feeling wick. They almost have a yellowish color and they're a little more rigid. Uh, and I don't know that's what this is. It could be the oil or the wax reacting with the wick to make it kind of feel that way. It really does kind of seem like a Performa wick. And it may not be at all. I'm just taking a stab in the dark here. But uh, that's the closest wick that I can, I can come up with other than your just straight flat cotton wick, uh, flat braid cotton wick. Out of the two we've seen so far, gorgeous candles and they both smell excellent. Let's move on to the final jar here. Now this one is, uh, it came in its own uh, box as well and instead of uh, specific packaging, it's more of a just luxury box with the ribbon on the top, branded ribbon. And this one, I'm starting to smell the cold throw as well. So again, it's pretty recurring theme with all these candles. Yeah, let's go get this out of here. All right, gorgeous jar. Uh, this is the most traditional of the of the candle jars so far. Kind of has that Libby tumbler style to it with a glass lid. Very traditional, but very elegant and classy. My guess is this is probably more of their standard signature line of candle. I could be wrong, but this has your very elegant, fancy, yet simple label. Uh, Jasmine Blossom is the name of this one. I have a feeling what this will smell like because I've used a lot of fragrances that have jasmine in them. Um, I, a lot of people, Jasmine's hit or miss. A lot of people just don't like Jasmine. Um, I actually do. I think it smells pretty good. Now on the bottom, this one's actually a clear transparent warning label, which is interesting. I like that clear label on this jar. That looks good. Um, and then finally, this is a white jar. Uh, it may look like this is the color of the wax coming through, uh, being a clear jar, but this is actually a white painted jar. Yeah, so it definitely has that jasmine fragrance. I have a honeysuckle jasmine candle that smells very similar to this. Uh, the honeysuckle jasmine candle that I have is mostly jasmine. And so these smell very, very similar. This is interesting. This wax feels different than the other two. Um, it could be because it was made at a different time, different temperature. Uh, I, I don't really know if the process variation could have made this feel a little bit different, but this definitely has a softer, silkier, smoother texture than the other two. In fact, if I didn't know this was soy, I would be on the fence. I would think maybe it's a parasoy or something like that. This one just looks a little bit different than the other two, for sure. Also, a dead ringer to me that it's a different wax. And I shouldn't say dead ringer. I could be wrong that it's a different wax, but I suspect this is a different wax than the other two. Um, it's still soy, but uh, I suspect it's a different blend than the other two. The other reason I think that is because of the wick. This wick is clearly different than the other two. Um, the other two had that yellower tint. They have a different look to them, a different feel to them. This one is closer to your typical standard cotton wick. I don't know exactly what type of wick it is. Um, it could be a, a regular cotton wick. It's not a square braid wick, I don't think. But this could be a Premier wick, maybe an LX wick, or even an RRD wick. Um, I don't know, and I, again, I don't have a way to, to check that, but uh, it's clearly different uh, combination uh, than the other two candles. The other thing I want to say is if we take a look at these three candles again, this just kind of goes to show for all of you new can newer candle makers and businesses out there that aren't sure which way to go with your line. Maybe you like a lot of different looks. This is kind of proof that you, you can branch out and have different styles of jars and containers um, and, and different lines of candles but still tie them all in together to fit your brand. Three distinct, unique candles, but still have a luxury feel to them. Um, and so I, I just think they've done a great job on the packaging, great job on the, on the fragrance selection, and the cold throw is amazing on each. The next step will be me stepping away and testing these for about a week, and then I will be right back here on the camera. It's gonna be in the same video. I'll just step away for like a second, and I'll be right back and let you know how these burned. But before I get to that, let me just kind of pick out my favorite at this point and see if that changes after I've had a chance to burn them. I think my favorite one is probably going to be the pumpkin chai in this in this case. Um, I actually like the other two a lot, but I have uh, fragrances that are very similar to the other two. Because I don't have a pumpkin chai, uh, I'm more interested in, in trying that one out. Um, but as I often do, after I've had a chance to burn them, uh, I, I will come back and let you know which is either still my favorite or has become my new favorite. Let me go ahead and step away and go burn these beautiful candles and I'll be right back and let you know what I thought about how they performed. All right, so I've had a chance to test out uh, these three candles sent in by Lodulo Muse over the last week and a half and uh, definitely some things I wanna talk about here. We're gonna talk about each candle individually and I'm gonna tell you a little bit about what I thought about the hot throw, uh, the overall fragrance just in general, uh, kind of which was my favorite, uh, as well as how they burned and the wicking. So let's go ahead and start with the uh, 
solid white jasmine blossom candle. Now, as I kind of assume, this seems like a standard kind of candle line for them. This seems like maybe a primary or signature line. I could be wrong on that, but just the look of it, uh, it just seems like that might be kind of a staple candle collection. And I have to say, the I, I enjoy the fragrance, Jasmine Blossom, like, a, like I mentioned before, you either like Jasmine or you don't, and so it, it really does boil down to personal preference. I do happen to like uh, many floral scents, including Jasmine scents. This one smelled pretty much like I expected it to. So it did smell good. It reminded me of a couple fragrances that I have. I have no complaints whatsoever with how this candle smelled, both the cold throw and the hot throw. And both the cold throw and the hot throw were actually very, very good. So this definitely filled a, a large area and um, even bled into uh, surrounding areas as well. So no complaints whatsoever with the hot throw. Additionally, the way this candle burned, I actually thought at first that it was going to be under wicked. Um, as you'll see in some of this footage here, it definitely seemed like it, it was may have a hard time reaching the edges, and I was a little worried that it might tunnel, but you know, early on in the, in the first couple, two or three burns of a candle, I don't really get too concerned about having too much hang up on the side. Unless it starts to tunnel so badly that the wick drowns out, I usually am not one that's concerned about um, not reaching the edges. Every wax type is different. Uh, harder, firmer waxes will take a little longer to get to the edge and super soft waxes will get there sooner. So I'm never one to judge something too early when it comes to a full melt pool, particularly when it seems to be performing well and, and burning well overall. As I suspected, that hang up on the side did go away uh, with every consecutive burn after that. So by the time I was completely done testing this candle, the burn ended up being absolutely perfect. So I did not have any hang up left. Um, by, by halfway down the jar, it was completely, uh, completely melted on the side. So it ended up being a perfectly burning candle. Combined with great hot throw and, and cold throw, again, if you like that scent, then I would overall consider this a very good candle. Just keep in mind that if you ever do burn a candle like this one in particular, or any candles that behave this way, early on it's not too uncommon for them to look like it's not wicked big enough, but give it time and it usually will catch up. It does depend on the wax. All wax behaves a little bit differently, but this is a good example of one of those candles that doesn't necessarily get that full melt pool at the very first burn, but ends up being a perfectly wicked candle. I actually try to wick many of my candles to uh, to have the best burn overall. You don't necessarily want something that has a great first burn if it ends up being over wicked the rest of the time. So all in all, I thought this was a very good candle. Uh, the, the fragrance, of course, comes down to personal preference, but as, as far as how the candle burned and performed, I thought this was a winner. So let's go ahead and move on to um, probably my least favorite of the candles. And this ended up being that apple one. I actually love the jar on this one. And as I mentioned before, I love apple fragrances. Unfortunately, out of the three, this is the one that I thought had the weakest hot throw. Um, this was burning and, and I did cycle these around. I did let them burn in different areas so that you know it was, it was a fair judge of each fragrance. But this was the only one I really had a hard time getting too much of a hot throw, which is a little unique for an apple fragrance. Usually apple smells uh, fill up a room fairly easily. So I was a little shocked that this one didn't have as much of a hot throw. It also did end up tunneling a little bit um, uh, to the point that it didn't seem to want it to recover. Um, nothing terrible, like it didn't, drown, it didn't drown out the wick. So a lot of times when a candle is truly tunneling, the wick ends up uh, flaming out, for lack of better words, and, and can't hold up and the wick will end up dying out. Um, in this case, that did not happen. The actual flame was good and the wick was burning what looked properly. It just didn't quite reach the edges. Even about halfway down the jar, I couldn't get it to quite catch up. But, and we're gonna talk about this a little bit in just a moment, but that's not necessarily means that a candle has failed. All, again, all candles are made differently and sometimes they will catch up and other times that will leave some hang up on the sides. Uh, and, and traditionally, a lot of candles were made to almost, it almost burns like a pillar candle, but inside a container. And that was done to keep it a, a safer burning candle. And the jar was never really exposed to that much heat. And that could be exactly what they're going for with this candle and, and even the next one. Um, maybe it's meant to burn like this, or at least only consume the majority of the wax and leave a little bit of hang up. I can't speak for them, I don't know, but uh, this this one didn't quite reach the edges as much as the first one. My bigger concern with this one, for me personally, was just the fragrance throw. I just didn't detect much. But again, that may have been just me. Last, I wanna move over to uh, this uh, pumpkin chai candle. 
Now, this one was not only my favorite, probably overall looking candle, um, and definitely the classiest looking candle, it was also my favorite fragrance of the three. Uh, one, because I do like uh, that pumpkin chai fragrance. I'm not a huge pumpkin fan on its own, but mixed with other fragrances, I do like it. So what was interesting is when I was burning this candle, and once I got a good enough melt pool that I could see through a little bit, you'll actually see what looked like a, a white votive candle in the middle where the wick was going through. Um, it's, it's perfectly round, and it looks like a harder, smaller candle um, surrounding the wick actually inside the container candle. Now, if this is the first time you've seen this, I'll try to explain what, what looks like is going on. Again, I didn't make these candles, so I can't tell you for sure what is happening, but I can tell you what it looks like to me. I have seen candles made before where the candle is actually made with a votive first. So a small votive candle with a wick, and then that is put in the center of the candle, and then the rest of the candle is poured around it. Um, that's an interesting tactic. It definitely takes some, some more work, but there's a couple good reasons to do that. The first is it keeps the wick uh, a little bit more firm and centered during the burn of the candle. The other good thing about it is because that votive is there in the middle first or that, that first amount of wax is in the center of the candle first, you have less uh, sinkholes and shrinkage of the wax as it's cooling because you're only really pouring the wax around that, uh, that first uh, votive or that first amount of wax in the candle, if that makes any sense. So you're pouring less wax um, to finish off the candle, which means less room for that wax to kind of shrink uh, and contract. I don't know if that's what they did here, but it sure looks like it to me. I could be completely wrong, but just going off visually what it looked like, and you'll see it here in the footage, hopefully, of what I'm talking about, but it sure looks like a small white votive candle in the center of the candle. The question is, is it the same wax being used or a different wax? I have to assume it's a different wax because it was firmer and it wasn't melting at the same rate as the other. But again, I, I could be wrong. I, I'm, I'm making a lot of uh, assumptions here and I'm speculating for sure, but that's what it appeared to me like was going on. And I've seen that method used before. So that is why I'm, I'm thinking that might be what they did here. Now let's talk about the only negative about this candle in my opinion, because the look was great and the fragrance was great. Um, and the hot throw was fine as well. The only thing that I had a, some struggle with was uh, it, this one did want a ton a little bit too, just like the last one. Now, it, it ended up doing better as the candle burned, and by about halfway through, I would say that uh, most of that ring had kind of gone away, but there was still a little bit of a ring, and it, it definitely was tunneling a little bit, but just take what I said earlier and apply it to this candle as well. Sometimes that is intentional to keep a glass safer, and the glass never gets hot, and I can tell you neither one of these jars ever got hot. But there's a big difference between a candle that is intended to leave some hang up on the sides versus a candle that is tunneling so badly that the flame ends up dying out and the candle ends up completely failing. Neither one of these candles failed. The wick actually burned properly. The flame looked good even on both of these last two candles, even though there was some, some fairly significant hang up on the side. Um, between both candles, I'd say the hang up was about a quarter inch, which is which is quite a bit for still being there halfway through the jar. A lot of customers uh, will will wonder about that. I know a lot of us are always concerned about making sure we consume most, most of the wax. I'm somewhere in the middle. I, I'm not a big fan of trying to get an early full melt pool right off the bat because that usually means you're gonna get overwicked or be overwicked further down in the jar. But I also want more of it consumed than what I saw in these last two candles. So I'm somewhere in the middle there. I like it to be safe burning and, and leave a little bit of hang up on the first burn or two. Again, depending on the wax, but I do want it to eventually catch up, usually somewhere around uh, the halfway mark. So these two did leave a little bit more hang up than, than I personally like, but the only one that I would say potentially affected the performance was the uh, the apple one because the pumpkin one, even though there was some hang up, still smelled great and still burned great. And then, uh, like I said, the uh, the the jasmine blossom ended up being pretty much a perfectly burning candle. So all in all, I thought these were very unique and different candles, and I thought overall that they were good candles. I love the fragrance choices. The only one I I would really struggle with overall was probably the apple one and maybe it was just me but i just still wasn't picking up much of a fragrance beyond that i liked the fragrance choices and i thought overall the candles burned well my only concern on two of them would have been how much hang up was left but 
You know, sometimes that varies candle to candle as well. Perhaps if I burn another exact one of these, maybe it would have burned a little bit better. It's really, really hard to tell when you're only doing a sample of one, but that would be my only concern on those two is maybe maybe up, upping the wick size one size would have been enough to make it a perfectly burning candle. Um, but again, the uh, this one ended up being great from top to bottom. So that's all I have for this review. I really appreciate you guys for taking the time to check it out. I also appreciate uh, Logilu Muse for sending these candles in. I will see you guys soon on another video. I've got so many videos planned and scheduled. So excited to get them all out. So I better get going so I can start working on those other videos and I will see you all next time. Thanks.